your virtual stretch clinic that helps you move the body, distill the mind. My name is Bani Suresh. I'm your host for this program. Yoga Express is taped in the studios of Manhattan Neighborhood Network. We air five days a week, Monday through Friday, on Time Warner 57, RCN 84, and Fios 35 at 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. Besides this yoga fitness program, we also have a website, a content website, www.yogaexpress.com, Y-O-G-A-X-P-R-E-S-S.com. The reason I spell it out for you is there is no E before the X, so you want to type it, express the XP without the E. If you do type in with the E, it's not going to take you to my site. It's actually a non-content site, which is not a website that's active. So feel free to visit us if you want to learn about the program itself. When you come on this show, and only if you come and stretch with us, we will share with you a copy of my third title, Yoga Secrets. We'll also give you a copy of a sun salutation poster and a postcard with 48 simple stretches. And so 48 basic low-impact stretches, I like to call it a bridge sequence, that target 32 major muscle groups, glands, and organs in the body, address eight common ailments in under 20 minutes a day. Now, if you can spare that 20 minutes a day for yourself, you can be sure that your body, at least you will know if your body is not functioning in certain parts. We are today, before I move on to reintroduce our guest today, we'd like to thank Josie and Hurd, our director and George Sotrellis crew, and we'd also like to thank Malik Parker, our facilitator, who's responsible for the studio lights and the setup opening track from Sapta Tandavam, Body Music by Siza Dipara, which was created just for Yoga Express. Now, you're all wondering who's going to be stretching with me today. After the last episode, Sandy Kane is back with us to stretch on the mats here. And I, I'm very curious, Sandy. I know you said some really interesting things after we finished taping the last time. You, you talked about, and we were going to talk about this on air, so with your permission, you talked about visiting, having visited L.A., and you were there for a show. Tell us a little more about that. Well, um, the, well, I was uh, on America's Got Talent right. with uh, Nick Cannon, and um, uh, who else was on there? Uh, Pierce Morgan, Howie Mandel, and Sharon Osbourne. Uh, but... Um, no, I'm just saying the fitness is excellent at, at right, California. Right, but you were talking about getting health, uh, about getting a high on exercising. You exercise oh, gosh, so much Oh, that's turbo more. kickbox. But that's I mean, the point I want to make to a Well, the endorphins are amazing. Right. And, um, you know, we eat, we sleep, we have to exercise our body because right. we need it. I mean, I can't see how people don't stretch. They, you know, the thing is, people do, they just don't do it mindfully. If you can move, you can stretch. So when you're stretching, with us here, we're actually doing it in a mindful way. We're actually teaching them the breath. In fact, stay right there. The way Sandy is seated right now, if we're gonna get the camera on her legs in just a moment. She's got one leg bent one way and the other leg is also bent the same way. See where you're sitting this way? This is a very girly posture. In India, girls would sit like this. It's only guys who would sit in cross-legged. Ah. And it's this is more a North American thing. In North America, they feel this is a meditative posture. And yesterday, and in fact, when we started, I, uh, Sandy sat this way in the last episode, and I wanted to point out the difference. Now, this posture also has a name. It's called Bhardwajasana. So that's the point we're trying to make. Every breath you take, every move we make is an aspect of yoga. Yoga identifies with that. So you've got a name for this posture. When we go up to reach for a jar, left hand goes up, right leg lifts up because you cannot reach up there. It's already in Natrajasana. So each posture, each move we make. When my mother was, when I was young, I'd watch my mother. We'd have a, this huge grinding stone. She'd have one leg extended, this foot would be flexed, this knee would be down, folded in. 
and she would be grinding in that big mortar and pestle kind of grind, a batter, she'd be grinding for the batter. Now women did not traditionally practice yoga for the sake of yoga in India. Traditionally it was the men who did it. Women did it as part of their household chores. Now the posture that I just showed, that's Janusish, it's already got a name. So that's what I want our viewers to understand, whether you like it or not, you are practicing yoga anyway. The thing is, we just help you give it a name. It's like going on the street. Let's say you and I didn't have a name, Sandy. How is someone going to identify us, right? right? It's like that. We just give the moves that you make, we give it a name. Now, Sandy Kane, because our viewers have already seen Sandy in the last episode, I didn't formally introduce her, but now I will. Sandy, you have a show on uh, TV as well, right? Well, I had went on for about 13 years, and um, I did. I made some specials. Um, uh, last year, um, it was Sandy Kane Blue Comedy Show, but now I have the Sandy Kane Naked Cowgirl Show, right. where I'm going to be um, showcasing my songs that I've recorded in Nashville, Tennessee, and some of the videos of the um, America's Got Talent, the um, Berlin. I did a song called I Love Dick in Berlin for this big show, where I needed to join a health club to, I was telling you that, that That's I could right. not actually breathe I can't breathe without exercising the breath that That's when you right. you know and you're breathing and I, I, I couldn't do the show I had to join a Berlin health club um, and uh, I had to or I had to leave Germany and not do the show so. right it was wonderful to the way you explained to me before we started today's taping you said you didn't understand a word of German at the time, but you and just I still followed. Don't. You still don't. <laughs> and the, the instructors were good. It's funny right. because you, well, you know we think New York, in New York it's only New York, it's only LA, it's only Tennessee, or it's all, hey, there's exercise all over the world, That's right. and you don't have to understand the language. You watch the teacher instruct, right. Right. and you watch the other students, and you you can do it. And it was wonderful, and all the music is American. It's that all is, English. That is such yeah. an honest confession. That you're right, though. You don't have to understand the language because you're watching the body movement, and you're following them. In yoga, what we do, we just go. One more, we add one more step to it. We ask you if you want to internalize the experience. What we tell folks when they're practicing yoga is close your eyes and every now and then internalize the experience mm. while you're holding the mm. postures, especially when we are holding it. Because that's the time, if you go to a regular studio, a yoga studio, that's the time when the teacher, because it is holding time, you and I as students would be holding the posture, but the teacher actually brings out all the explanations in that holding moment. So you're really ingesting all of that, you're ingesting the explanation. So when you go home, you're able to enjoy the benefits of those long stretches, the long holds. And in fact, that's another and thing. That is, that, can I just say that you sure. say that we stretch uh, anyway, but we really don't. It, like, uh, when I stretch at enough, home, yeah. when you hold the stretch, That's and it. then you really keep, re and then reach, because you never stretch enough. That's true, though. It's mindful stretching. What we're teaching here is mindful stretching. You consciously stretch. You think about it. And in fact, these postures here, Sandy, the one on this postcard, some of the postures look ridiculously difficult. But you know what? They look difficult for me, for example. I may or may not be able to go as deep, but for me, if I have the image of that posture in my mind, I have a goal to work towards, and mm -hmm. that's what we're aiming for. And that's what it's all about. Exactly. It's not about getting into the postures right away. It's about getting in and out safely, and about having a goal, and it's the same thing in life. We all want a goal in life. Otherwise, we're just going around aimlessly. We're just misusing our energy right here. So we want to make sure that, feel free, George, if you want to come stretch with us. We want to make sure that we do mindful stretching. Our breath moves with our body, with the postures. So here's what we're going to do. Josie Ann, for our director and for our crew, George Sotrellis, here's what we're going to do. We're going to stand up. But you know what, Sandy, let's do this. You mentioned breath. Why don't we do a few breathing exercises before we do the standing stretches? Because breath is more important. In fact, it's step three of, of Ashtanga Yoga. Ashtanga Yoga, Ashtanga, like breathing I said Breathing is today. life. That's right. And there are different kinds of breathing that target yeah. different uh, regions of the body as oh, well. Oh, good. To help I could use this ailments. myself to <laughs> well, really um, really exaggerate the breathing. Right, right, exactly. Deep and and I'll just tell you one thing, and people have, have said this a lot of times, that when you are really stressed, st take deep breaths. I, that's how I fall asleep at night. 
deep breath I and just what, erase what's going on, the know, voices you, in your head, just sh focus in on breathing, on life. Did you realize that, that is a very good observation. Did you realize though, that when people say take a deep breath, the relaxation comes not in the inhales, it's the exhale. Uh -huh. So every time really? when we take a deep breath, we are taking deep breath in, but mm -hmm. when you take a deep breath in, you automatically have to exhale as well. And it's the exhale process that detoxes us and relaxes us. Exactly, when someone says take a deep breath, and we don't even realize it, but inhale happens. If you do conscious exhales, you do not only detox, you relax your mind and body, and the inhale is already happening. So let's try a couple of breaths before we do some standing stretches. You brought up a very good point. It's a nice reminder, let's do that. Now, there are some breaths which, one of them is called the um, shining skull. Literally what we do, and if you're comfortable, if you want to sit on your heels, and we could also, those of you at home, if you feel you don't want to sit on your heels today, you can use a block or a brick to sit on to take the pressure off of your ankles. And very nice, both palms on your knees, palms are facing down. One more thing before we do the two simple breathing exercises, I want to point out something very important. In yesterday's episode, Sandy was sitting cross-legged. I was sitting in this posture. The cross-legged is called Padmas, and Padma is lotus. Sometimes it's half lotus, sometimes it's full lotus. If you have both your heels right across on the opposite side, it's a full lotus. If you're just very comfortably sitting down, it's Sukhas, and Sukha is happy. So it's a happy, comfortable posture. This one is called Vajrasan. Vajra is brave. It's a kind of a warrior posture. Warriors in ancient India, I guess, sat this way. So this is Vajra. When you sit in this posture, do what Sandy's doing, keep your palms facing down. I also tend to keep my forefinger and index fingers together. Again, there doesn't have to be a religious significance to that. It simply means everybody is charged with electricity. So it simply means we are keeping that electric arc of electric energy within ourselves. When you keep your hands free, all the charge is going out. So you want to internalize the experience, keep your energy within yourself. You can connect the two fingers. Sometimes people can keep all their fingers together. But I think it's just easier, two fingers. Now, Kapal Bhati or Shining Skull. This particular breath is very forceful exhales through the nostril. Every exhale is called a stroke. So what we do, we first fill our lungs with air. Within that lung full of air, we do very brisk, quick exhales. So we're basically we're using our belly to exhale. That's right. So here's what we're going to do. Take a deep breath in and close your eyes if you want to. Start exhaling. Pick up speed. Now it's like an engine, so we're going to go a little faster. Now, we've already exhausted all the air, but when your lung is really full of air and you do only the fast strokes, you could do about 30 to 40 strokes a minute. That is a wonderful pace. So we're gonna try that one more time. This time we're doing only the fast strokes. Very quick, brisk exhales. So place your hands on your knees. Now, inhale, take a deep breath in. Now it closes. I don't think I counted 30. I think I cheated a little. I stopped short of 30. But it closes with a deep, deep, slow exhale. That's when you're exhausting the last sips of air from your lungs. So when you keep practicing, your lung capacity increases. This posture is especially good for helping channel all that energy into your bones, your veins. And it really does. You feel a wonderful relief in your bones when you do these brisk exhales. And of course, we also get a bit, bit of a high when you get you get heady. Oh, you get heady. And we leave stress. It does. It does. Oh. And we have one more which we are going to share with all of you today. And that one is actually called, we've already been practicing one of them which I never pointed out. But the other one is called Bhastrika. Bhastrika literally means bellows. So like the bellows in the ancient times, they used to blow through the bellows. The goldsmith and the blacksmith would blow through so it would open up. So this is the bellow part of your body. So what you're going to do is take a deep inhale through the nostril, exhale through the belly. So we'll try that one time first. 
So feel your stomach, your lower abdominal region going in and out. Let's try that. Take a deep breath in. Faster. So what we're doing in this part, in this particular breathing technique, we're inhaling and exhaling consciously. The first one was only exhales, the shining skull, Kapalpati. This one is inhale and exhale. And as you can imagine, this particular posture, bellows breathing, is especially good for helping prevent constipation. So you feel you're constantly constipated, massages your large intestine, helps you, helps it, makes it easier for you to go. So the other breath, which I think Sandy was also subconsciously using it, and I consciously use it all the time, is what we call ujjayi breath. When you were exhaling, you were actually consciously, and I noticed because I think I recognize ujjayi, it comes from the back of the throat, especially in the downward dog postures that we were doing in yesterday's episode. So ujjayi breath, you basically keep your finger at the base of your throat, Take a deep, keep your mouth closed. The air will go in through the nostril, but you're consciously inhaling, really, through the throat. Exhale through the throat. One more time. So when we do these stretches, and we're gonna stand up in a moment and take you through some standing stretches. When we do these stretches, we mostly use Ujjayi exhales. So we exhale through the back of our throat in most of these stretches. When we have to do chest openers, we'll inhale. But as far as possible, we'll do it through the back of the throat. So let's all stand up. Well, let we both are gonna stand up, and those of you at home, feel free to join us. Stand up with us, and we're gonna take you, I think our feet are frozen, right, Sandy? <laughs> we need to get the blood moving now. Oh, right, right. <laughs> and that's another aspect. It's one of the five main principles of yoga is actually, one of the five main ones is gravity. The other one is circulation. So it's all about circulation. It's about massaging the glands and organs. It's about gravity. So here's what we're gonna do. Heels together. A couple of postures may remind you of yesterday's episode. They are more or less similar to the ones in the sun salutation. Press your palms in, elbows are raised. Now, we are following the postcard from postures one through six or eight, depending on how much time we have. Inhale, take your arms up. Exhale, fold from the hip. Now, instead of continuing into sun salutation, bring your heels out to the side. The insides of your feet are parallel to each other. Inhale first, bring your arms up to shoulder height. Keep your palms facing in. Exhale, bend at the knees. I know a lot of studios like to tell us, the yoga studios point out that this is like sitting in an imaginary chair. That's fine, it's a standing squat. And it's a really good burn on the thighs. Inhale, let's come up. Exhale and release. Let's turn to face this camera. We're gonna to turn to face the front right of the mat, so we are facing that camera. Bring your legs out, about three. Oh, Sandy, you might feel blindsided. Maybe Josiane can pick us up on either, so you want to follow what I'm doing so you'll be able to see. Okay. Let's turn to face this camera, and Josiane can pick us up anywhere. Bring your legs out about three feet apart. Put your brakes on. So when I say put your brakes on, I mean bring your toes in. And that's important for you before you get into your postures, especially with your legs apart, you don't want to slip. The posture we just came out of was actually called Thunderbolt or Utkat. Now we're going to go into Triangle, Tiryang, um, Trikonasana. Now once you're nicely adjusted, bring your right foot out. Upper body faces the left of the room or studio or your wherever you are. Inhale the arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Turn gracefully to look at the tip of your fingers in the right hand. Lean a little bit to your right. Exhale and dip your right hand in front of your right ankle. Take the left arm all the way up. Both palms face forward. Turn to look up at the raised arm and hold. Three cone or triangle three is three cone is corners. Now you should feel a wonderful stretch of your adductor muscles, the inside of your upper right thigh and a beautiful stretch 
a delicious stretch on your abductors, the outside of your upper left thigh. Inhale, let's come up. Turn your right foot in, turn the left foot out. We're gonna look away from the cameras for just a moment. Look at the tip of your fingers in the left hand. Lean a little to your left. Exhale, dip your left hand in front of the left ankle. Take the right arm all the way up. Look up at the raised arm and hold. So you want to make sure you're able to hold these postures. So you want to be comfortable. If you're in pain, release your posture. Inhale, let's come up. And then let's continue on at the left side before we finish on the right side. Left knee, left foot is already out. Exhale, bend the left knee. Veda Bhadra, a lot of schools in uh, North America also teach this posture, brave warrior. Keep exhaling and dip the left hand in front of the left ankle. Take the right arm all the way up. If you want to challenge yourself further, take the right arm all the way overhead, palm faces down. Now this time when your arm is all the way overhead, you should feel this wonderful stretch of the whole right side of the body, including your triceps, your abductors, and your ankles on the side. Inhale, come up, and let's complete these postures. Straighten your left knee, turn your left foot in, turn the right foot out. Let's complete these postures on the right side. Exhale, bend the right knee. Keep exhaling, dip your right hand in front of your right ankle, take the left arm all the way up and then challenge yourself. Take your left, left arm, I'm sorry, take your left arm all the way overhead. This time you will feel a wonderful stretch of the whole left side of the body. Inhale, let's come back up. Both arms at shoulder height, straighten your right knee, turn your right foot in, exhale, bring your arms down. Let's wiggle our feet a little closer, turn to face the front of the mat. That's already six postures, and I think we're doing very well for time. Oh, You're a good student, girl. I like that. Professional, <laughs> that's what I do for a living, student. That's right. Turn, turn to face the front left of the mat, the so front left corner of the mat. Now bring your heels out about four to six inches apart. So man, let's say hip width apart. So if I measure four to six, it's a little hard because different people are at, uh, are, at are different heights. So you want to bring a hip width apart. Place both your palms on your buttocks. We have about five minutes left. I think we can comfortably do at least one, two, three, four postures. Push your elbows back. So you already have a beautiful chest opener right there. So your pectorals, pectorals are right across your chest, your intercostals between the rib cage. All of those get a wonderful stretch, a wonderful release. You're releasing all those happy juices. Now, inhale, lift your chin up. Once you get past midpoint, exhale, glide your palms down the back of your thighs. Keep that connection. Do not let go of your hands. Bend your knees if you need to. Now, it's okay not to go too deep. The important thing is to relax and enjoy it. Inhale. Let's come up. And then let's do a little bit of a side twist to ease any possible tension. I don't think we feel too much tension. Josiane, yeah, the monitor is acting up and it's gone off. But as long as the tape in the back is okay, we're fine. Bring your legs out. This time you want to bring your legs about a little further than you normally would. Normally I bring it out about three feet apart. For this posture, I want to bring it further out. And I might also need to use a block. So I'm going to keep this handy. And in case you want one, Sandy, you have that too. And keep that ready. So bring your feet out about, legs are out about three and a half. Prasarita Padottanasana. Prasarita is widespread. Padottan is legs. Inhale the arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling. Take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Clasp your palms together in any manner you've been trained. You could clasp them all the way, keep your index fingers out, or you could keep your palms flat. I tend to cross my fingers over. Exhale, fold from the hip. Keep your back nice and straight, and I want to make sure I don't hit Sandy, so exhale and fold. Once your palms are down, you can wiggle your feet a little further apart if it helps you bring your head closer to the forehead, closer to the floor. And then keep exhaling. Use your props if you need to, but always try to use your body first. Exhale and dip. 
Now, if you're a little tired today and your head is not going to touch the ground, use the block to help you make that connection. You can keep it at its lowest point first and then if that doesn't do it for you, keep it at midpoint. And if you're really tired, you really don't want to go down all the way, keep the block at its highest orientation. Whatever you do, make sure you make that connection. Now bring your palms a little closer, elbows are bent, and then wiggle your feet a little closer. I'm going to take the block off, I don't need it anymore. And when you feel it's safe to bring your hands off of the floor, press your palms together, inhale, come up with a straight back. Exhale and release. Wiggle your feet a little closer. And we're going to take you through two more postures. We have a couple of minutes. Feel free to join us. We have a couple of minutes left, so we're going to turn to face the front of the camera. And here's what we're going to do. These are very relaxing postures. We talked about hypertension, right? This posture especially is really good to calm the mind. Heels together, toes apart, palms in front of your chest. Inhale, take your arms up. Ardha Chandra, half moon. Chandra is moon, Ardha is half. What we're going to do is we're going to exhale, sway to the right and to the left. Exhale, dip to the right. It doesn't matter which side you start, just make sure you sway, dip to both sides. Inhale, back to the center, exhale to the left. Inhale, back to the center, exhale, and release your arms. Bring your arms in front of you, bring your hands in front of your chest, palms are facing down. We're going to transition directly into the next posture while we do that. I'd like to thank our crew, Josie and Hurd, our director, and George Sotorellis in the control room. And we have Malik Parker to thank for the studio lights and the gobos and the setups right here. Opening track from Sapta Tandava and body music by Cesar De Para, which you'll hear in just a moment. That's by Cesar, created just for Yoga Express. Bring your heels out so that the insides of your feet are parallel to each other. We're now gonna exhale, swing our right arm out Inhale, bring the right arm back in, then we'll do the same on the other side, and we'll do that twice. The first time, keep your hips where they are, and both times, keep your feet where they are. The second time, take your hips with you, but your feet still stay there. So we're going to stagger ourselves. So Sandy, if you want to come forward, I'll go back so we don't hit each other. Elbows are raised, palms in front of your chest, palms are facing down. Exhale, swing your right arm out. Follow your arm with your eyes. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale, to the left. Inhale, back to the center. This time, take your hips with you and notice the difference. Exhale, to the right. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale, to the left. Inhale, back to the center. See, when we were children, we would love to do this, Sandy, and we just couldn't stop ourselves, actually. It's a wonderful motion of the spine, and that's enough. Let's sit down, we'll talk, because the rest are balanced, and we really need to do one after the other. Actually, the last posture we just came out of is called Kati Chakra. Chakra is, again, wheel. Kati is spinning. So it's literally, it's a translation from Sanskrit, and it means spinning wheel. When we were little, we would do that. Keep swinging, and what's happening is your body, your spine,